video is about the RML 1997. As the name implies, this is a mid-90s method for presenting things in three dimensions instead of a web page. Instead of going to a page with six pictures that are links to your MySpace or Facebook or you know LinkedIn or your OnlyFans, you'd have a set of doors with hopefully something on them that's a little more interesting. And I can guarantee you that um, having an environment where someone would walk around in some sort of puzzle palace might have been much more entertaining, at least in the 90s. And I want to point out that this technology was readily available because so many competitors were putting out software so that you could generate it using a 3D editor. In fact, Blender contains a method for making this, at least supposedly. Uh, there was even a way for me to use Unreal Editor for Unreal 1 to make pages. Since I'm very good at using Unreal Editor, I could create an entire environment and then build it as a virtual reality markup language page like this, the RML. And it would end up being a WRL file, a world file. And I could have saved it, sent it to someone as an email. It's mostly text written out as a text file, and then you just rename the end of it. Instead of renaming it HTM or HTML like you do when you make a web page in the old days, you'd rename it WRL. And instead of it showing a bunch of words or having markup language information or tags or inline uh, inserts for pictures and video or sound files or animated GIFs, it would show you this. Just like having a picture on a web page, you can tell it to make it larger or smaller or stretch it so it's taller or skinnier, you would feed it a picture and tell it to make it a door shape. But unlike HTML, you would be able to tell it to make it a three-dimensional object. You would make it to where it could do things like interact, it could open and close. Or you could just make it simple like this one is as an example of six worlds to jump to, basically just hyperlinks clicking a picture, where you'd click a 3D object and the cursor would suddenly turn into this target. And and you're not allowed to have this anymore. Thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people, got into this and made artwork and put it on the net. And it did not consume that much bandwidth. It was actually not really all that heavy. In fact, compared to what we do now on Facebook or YouTube, this stuff loads rapidly. Now, I am using a older version of Firefox. I had to use Firefox version 20 from years ago in order to be able to load the plugin from 1997 and 1996. That's how old the files are. And it works very rapidly. Now, remember at the time, you'd optimize a page. This is actually considered a demonstration page. You just put on some sort of picture. Now, all I'd have to do is, if I wanted to, if I could get access to the files somehow mysteriously, is download the entire collection of pages and just change out these blah blue colored doors and make them into wooden doors. And here we have our mono yellow staircases. And if I middle mouse click, I can look around and see that we're in a void. And yeah, this is really screaming to be done for making uh, backrooms levels. So let's bring up all of the menus and functions that are being hidden. But again, this has a full screen mode. We go over to the lower left and we see the little dark edge here and we click the button to bring up the entire interface. This one's got everything turned on at once, I do believe. Uh, let's see here. That hides. hides. So we have um, a, excuse me, a status bar down here and we have other things. For instance, this one's giving us some information about it. So let's click the other viewports. First of all, we hit the default viewport. Now I can use keyboard and mouse functions to do this, so I'll just do the uh, viewport drop-down list. Let's go to hell pit view. Well, that turns us to this door, and that means that this goes to the hell pit. If I hit page up and page down, it will allow me to go to each of the pages. And it'll also tell me down here in the little status display what we're looking at partially. This is the door that goes to Strange Hills. This one is goes to Ludo World. This one goes to Moving Sand. It just doesn't say it fully. 
This one goes to Virtual Island. This one goes to Zoo Island. And this one goes to Hell Pit. And then now we're back at the intro view. And you'd be expected to just click these things. When you hover over them, they don't put up a status display, but that is an option where I'd hover over it and it would put up a little text there or maybe put it down here in our status view to tell me where we're going. Now, in order for us to click these, I have to be able to come back and forth and it doesn't have a back button. So it's not a full browser. In fact, it's inside of a browser. I'm using it inside of Firefox 2.0. So here's Firefox 2.0. And this is called Cosmo Player or Cosmo Viewer, and it's Cosmo uh, version 2. Actually, 2.1 in most cases. This is the last version I could find that would let me do this. Now, I'm going to go over how the mouse works and keyboard works in a second. First of all, I'm going to hold down the middle key right here. And when I move it up and down, I can look up and down, and I can look right and left by rotation. Now, that means that the middle mouse key in this configuration moves me around in two dimensions by rotation. There's several dimensions we're dealing with here. I can slide left and right using the keyboard. And you'll notice which keys or which dots light up. The slide function, which lets me do that up and down and right to left. And then if I want to go forward and back, I can slide forward and back. That means I have three dimensions I can move along and I can rotate without moving in this and this, and now we're at the tilt function. Now, if I set my mouse that way, I can obviously do that, but here's what we can do. I can middle mouse click, and it shows you down there in the lower left there that that's turned on, which means I can rotate in all dimensions, except I can't tilt my head left to right. That's actually a feature, and I'm not going to go into it, at least not yet. Now, if I right click, I can slide and go up and down. And again, if I want to go forward, I can just left click and move forward and back. Okay, I'll show you the rotate. Doink. Yappy. That's for observing objects, but I want to show you what goes wrong sometimes. Yeah, not ideal. Not ideal at all. So uh, let's go back to our entry view. That's why they have those views, is so we can reset our positions. Now we're going to click forward and back into the worlds, and I have to have the back and forward key to do it. So let's click this one. This is called Hell World, or Hell Pit. And I can move around with the keyboard. I can also move around by just moving like this, and I can use the middle key to tilt up and down, and the right key can shift me and shimmy. And right now, gravity is activated. Now let me hit the shift key so I can run over here and jump in the pit. And if I jump in the pit, I fall to the bottom. Now, if I try to reset myself and go back to pit view, so I'm looking at the edge of it, it's a very deep hole. Gravity says it's enabled. And I can go ahead and tilt myself. And it works pretty much like it's supposed to, although it's deadly slow depending on the lower, which, you know, which world you load. They're called worlds and or VR environments. Now I'm going to hit back key. Let's hit this one, and this takes us to an island. This is called Zoo Island, and it has error messages here. I'm just going to clear them and tell it to stop telling me about it. The page is old. I can't edit it. We're going to skip the error messages. I'm going to hit the Seek button, which really just means leap. I'm going to aim at the object way over here, and it kind of gets me there. It's not really that great, but it's pretty good. Now, you might be thinking... Why are we looking at this? This is silly. Now, as you may have noticed in the previous one, all the all the low resolution stuff going on. Okay, well, does it have to be? The answer is no, it doesn't. We can use very high resolution images if we want to. Again, this is optimized for 1995 Windows 95 installs, but you can have resolution that's very high if you want to. I can even tell it to jack the resolution up to where it's nearly photorealistic. And that's kind of all there is to this. This had a lot of potential, and there was even an upgrade a little while later, very, very short time later, that allowed people to load literally photorealistic environments. <clears throat> and this is the moving sands. The sand appears to be breathing, like an earthquake's going on. It's cute. <clears throat> 
this is, well, it's actually just called hills and it's a blank area. Let's look at this one. This is a playground area themed something something. And it has roads and uh, there's a buggy over there. So let's go visit the buggy. We're going to hit our targeter toy and go all the way over here. And this may have been built with the ability for us to actually interact with it. We might have been able to get into it, walk around over here, maybe uh, be driving it. I've driven a couple of these. Oh, we can click it. What happens? Well, nothing. It has a bunch of errors in it and it doesn't work, which is sad. But wait a minute, I'm using software from the same era. Shouldn't it work? <clears throat> The answer is obviously yes. That was interesting. Uh, now I'm going to get to the sad part of all this. This artwork, I call it artwork, by the way, because it is artwork. Someone put their blood, sweat, and tears into this. Isn't compatible with the software it was written for. I'll bring you back to the uh, rather liminal environment here for a few minutes. And I'll do my close out. <clears throat> Most of these pages are simply not able to work. I was, I was happy to find any page that would work. And I was amazed that I could. Um, because normally they don't. And that's intentional. Why do I say that? Okay, really simple and to a conclusion. While I can download a browser that will let me use the older plugin that does this and it works as good as it's going to every single company that put out software to edit these pages and every single company that put out plugins like I'm using now went out of their way to destroy them every few months or years they would put out a new version that made it to where your old artwork wouldn't work anymore to force you to buy a new editor um, and that means that memorials to people's former family members, uh, entire web communities, vast amounts of very clever puzzles, and yes, liminal spaces are, or may now be, very soon, completely missing. Over 99% of the content that was out there has been lost because people were slowly and miserably tormented into not trying to update them. Because they kept updating them, they doomed them to failure. Yes, this is a absolutely borderline crappy environment. And yes, I could, if I really wanted to, and I might do it, don't tempt me, I might go ahead and turn this into a high-resolution environment and make it into a liminal space video someday. Hell, it even comes with mono yellow pre-coded into the level. And I can make this nearly an infinitely large array of them, literally like the back rooms. And it would just be needing me to either find almost impossible to find software to write it with or use Blender to dump it out because I can get Blender to do the editing technically. Although it fights me too because lawyers and copyrights and patents got in the way of this. Sound familiar? Getting rid of your ability to be creative on the Internet or have a 3D environment to run around in and have nobody charge you a fee or give you microtransactions or shove an ad in your face. That just can't happen. And if anybody's curious, every once in a while I mumble about this being a lost set of technologies and arts. And maybe this video gives you an idea of why. Now, there is some hope for this. The original standard and many of the subsequent standards are still open source, just like the Internet. And just like the advent of Internet Explorer, trying to make it to where the Internet was something you had to be paying Bill Gates for, and it failing, this was also a failure. All of these companies that put out all that software and all of those restrictions and copyright restrictions and all of the 3D consortium jerks that became part of the problem instead of solving it, that made it worse and worse, all of them that are dead-ass guilty of this, it's still technically alive, but again, I'm going to remind you, the reason you can't have this, the reason it is now essentially gone, 
or almost gone and fading away, was it was intentional to stop you from being creative in three dimensions instead of the one or two dimensions you can do on the internet now. And all you have to do is learn about it, click some links below, and maybe it won't fade into the distance like this. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.